welcome and good morning. You know, we dream of being free from all commitments. We all want to be able to spend our time and to live our lives the way we want to. It is Jesus who frees us from that encumbrance of our sinful nature. Having been set free from the condemnation of the law and the burden of sin, we then find ourselves committed to the call of God's grace. And when we are embraced by Christ's freedom, we're caught by the commitment to go and proclaim the kingdom of God. And all that that means by extending God's love and his forgiveness to all. With those thoughts in mind, we raise our hearts and voices in worship. We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. He is the Lord of our heart, our hope eternal. Come, let us worship in humility and joy. Amen. For freedom, Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. For you were called to freedom, my brothers and sisters. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. But if you bite and devour one another, watch out that you are not consumed by one another. Most merciful Lord, we confess that we have sinned against you. We have worshipped your creation rather than worshipping you. We have put ourselves in places of honor that obscure your honor. We have not always obeyed you in our thoughts, in our words, and in our actions. Some of our sins we know, and some are known only to you. Forgive us, we pray, for the sake of Jesus Christ. Our merciful God has heard our prayer and has given his only Son to die for our sins. For his sake, God gives us the gift of forgiveness. At his command and promise, I, as your called and ordained servant of the word, forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We hear God's word appointed for this day. The Old Testament reading for the third Sunday after Pentecost is from 1 Kings chapter 19. 
Behold, the word of the Lord came to Elijah, and he said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? He said, I have been very jealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the people of Israel have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And he said, Go out and stand on the mount before the Lord. Behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind tore the mountains and broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, the sound of a low whisper. And when Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his cloak and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. And behold, there came a voice to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He said, I have been very jealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the people of Israel have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus, and when you arrive, you shall anoint Haziel to be king over Syria, and Jehu the son of Nimshi you shall anoint to be king over Israel, and Elisha the son of Shaphat of Abel Mahola, you shall anoint to be prophet in your place, and the one who escapes from the sword of Haziel shall Jehu put to death. And the one who escapes from the sword of Jehu shall Elisha put to death. Yet I will leave seven thousand in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. So he departed from there, and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen in front of him, and he was with the twelfth. Elijah passed by him and cast his cloak upon him, and he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Let me kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow you. And he said to him, Go back again, for what have I done to you? And he returned from following him, and took the yoke of oxen, and sacrificed them, and boiled their flesh with the yokes of the oxen, and gave it to the people, and they ate. Then he arose and went after Elijah and assisted him. So far, our Old Testament reading. Our epistle is from Galatians chapter 5. For freedom, Christ has set us free. Stand, there, stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. For you were called to freedom, brothers. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, watch out that you are not consumed by one another. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit, and the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things you want to do. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. So far, our epistle reading. The Holy Gospel is found in the ninth chapter of St. Luke. 
When the days drew near for Jesus to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem. And he sent messengers ahead of him who went and entered a village of the Samaritans to make preparations for him. But the people did not receive him because his face was set toward Jerusalem. And when his disciples, James and John, saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to tell fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he, war he turned and rebuked them, and they went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, Follow me. But he said, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. And Jesus said to him, Leave the dead to bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Yet another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to him, No one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. So far our gospel reading. Let us now confess our faith to one another and to the world in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please join me in prayer. O Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for providing us a goodly heritage through our Lord Jesus Christ. Our hearts are glad, our souls rejoice in your promise that in your presence there is fullness of joy at your right hand. There are pleasures forevermore. We confess that we become discouraged when we consider how many there are who fail to recognize your power and mercy. We often forget that there are many who honor you through receiving your Son, Jesus Christ, as their Savior. We confess that we are often led into temptation by our flesh, rather than permitting your Holy Spirit to guide us. We have often used our Christian freedom as a license to do those things which displease you and give offense to others. We confess that we have often failed to witness to the suffering, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ for fear that such knowledge might be unacceptable to them. For these and many other sins against your holy will, we ask your forgiveness. Help us walk in the Spirit, withstand the temptation to follow the inclination of our flesh. Send us your Holy Spirit, that he may teach us to follow Christ, and produce the fruits of the Spirit. Instill in us a desire for love and joy, peace and patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, and self-control. Lord, we ask you to take care of those that we name in our hearts. We ask you to provide the healing necessary, whether it is in body, mind, or spirit. Hear and answer as you alone know best. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us the faith to follow our Lord Jesus Christ, even in the face of suffering and sacrifice. All this we ask in his name, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. It's time for our children's message. Great to see all of you here this morning. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Today I want to tell you about a little boy named, whose nickname rather, was Hootie. Hootie was a fifth grader who did very well in school, made good grades, followed the rules, uh, was always ready to help his fellow students whenever they needed anything. But near the end of the school year, the teacher told the class, next year, you'll all be going to middle school. Well, upon hearing that, Hootie became afraid. The thought of going to a strange new school with lots of older students and, and new teachers and, and more classes just frightened him. He didn't want to move forward. He was happy to stay right where he was. So, do you know what Hootie did? Well, Hootie started to act up in class. He stopped doing his homework. He was mean to his fellow students and even to some of the teachers. He thought, if I fail fifth grade, I won't have to move on to middle school. Do you think that was a good idea? <laughs> no, neither did his mother. And so his mother sat him down and asked him, Hootie, if I were to ask you to follow me into middle school, would you follow me? Well, Hootie said immediately, yes. And so she asked, well, why would you follow me? Why do you think Hootie would follow his mother? What do you think he said? Exactly. He said, because you would be there for me. Well, then his mother said, well, Jesus says for us to follow him every day. So if Jesus is leading and you're following him, do you think he would also be there for you in middle school? Well, who he had to stop and think about that for a minute. What would you say? You're right. Jesus is with us. He's for us every single day. In fact, in our gospel reading today from St. Luke, Jesus calls a man to follow him. Well, that man and then a, a few others weren't quite as ready to follow as they thought they were. Some of them were kind of like Hootie, who thought he wanted to just stay in the fifth grade. They thought they'd rather just keep on doing what they were doing or, or having some of the things they were doing and, and having things stay the same. But when we follow Jesus, he is always there with us. And that's why he died on the cross for us, so that he could always be with us and we could always be with him in heaven. And so with a sigh of relief, Hootie finally understood Jesus would be with him even in that new school. So no matter what our fears may be, we can follow Jesus because he is with us and he is for us every step of the way toward heaven. Let's fold our hands and bow our heads to thank him. Dear Heavenly Father, again, we thank you for sending Jesus to lead us so that we could follow him. We now know that there is nothing to be afraid of as he is leading the way. And so we pray you would help us to always remember that and always follow him. In his name we pray. Amen. Now we continue with our worship service. Obey my 
Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father, from our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for our meditation today is our gospel reading from Luke chapter 9. Let us pray. O Lord our God, I pray that the words of my lips and the meditation of our hearts might be pleasing and acceptable in your sight as we seek your kingdom. Amen. Now, in the name of our Savior, Amen. If I were to take a poll this morning, I'm sure that most all of you would agree that news travels fast. Whether it's good news, bad news, even the wrong news, news travels. We live in a time frame whereby we can sit on our easy chairs or lay in our beds and watch news 24 hours a day. We don't even have to be by a TV. We get instant updates on our phones, iPads, our tablets. Whether it is the same news or new news, the point of the matter is that we have access to news all day long. You know, one thing that never ceases to amaze me is the fact that all of these news channels, whether it's Fox News or CNN or MSNBC, CBS, ABC, NBC, even PBS, they all boast they are the only ones who are able to provide you, the viewer, with the most up-to-date coverage on a particular story. Nevertheless, what I've discovered is the fact that they use this tactic in an effort to keep you watching. In other words, they want to keep you on the edge of your seat. Well, let me help you. Here's an example. It doesn't matter the channel, but at the top of the hour, you know when the news first comes on, the weatherman says, well, it looks like thunderstorms are in the forecast, but then they don't show you the whole weather segment until 15 or 20 minutes later, trying to keep you locked in. Some even boast to have a special story, one that no other station can provide. They boast they are the only ones with the inside scoop. They often title it exclusive or breaking news. Well, I've got some breaking news for you this morning. In fact, we interrupt this sermon for a word from our sponsor regarding some good news. You see, the news I have for you this morning may be old news for some of you and new news for others. But there is one thing certain about this news unlike any other news. This particular news never plays out. Yeah, some news gets old. But this news is always fresh. Some news I'm tired of hearing about. I am so glad that I don't have to listen to anything more about Johnny Depp or Amber Heard as if I cared about their married life anyway. Nor do I want to hear about monkey pox or possible new mask mandates, vaccines, and on and on and on it goes. I'm tired. I'm tired of hearing about the news. Enough is enough. But there is something about this news 
found in our scripture reading today that never, ever gets old. This news is what some refer to as good news. The only problem with this news is that although it is, well, good, you just can't seem to find enough reporters willing to tell it. Oh, reporters are quick to tell you about the latest sex tuplets, uh, about stem cell research, about the latest celebrities' drug problems. They even interrupt your favorite television program to show you a police chase out, a police chase out on the highway. But when it comes to telling the news of the kingdom of heaven, again, when it comes to telling the news of the kingdom of heaven, you just can't seem to find any correspondence, or shall I say people, willing to tell the story. And that refusal to report the story leaves us with some huge job vacancies. The refusal to report leaves us with some tremendous employment opportunities. If you don't believe me, listen to this. The words Jesus said to his disciples here in Matthew chapter 9. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. This lack of coverage, this lack of reporting, has left us with tremendous job opportunities. May I submit to you this morning, there are some job vacancies and opportunities even in this church. You see, we are looking for those who are willing to start spreading the news. In fact, bear with me for a moment. I hang up while I hang up the help wanted sign. We need to fill some job vacancies. And no, I'm not talking about filling this pulpit, although that, as you know, will soon be a need. But we do need people who are willing to start spreading the news. Well, let's take a look real quickly at the first applicant found in our text there in verse 57. He goes by the name someone, we are told. And as they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Now, it's a pretty bold statement. I'm willing to suggest this is one of the reasons why we have such a huge vacancy in the church. Somebody, someone, joined the church, made a lot of promises about what he was going to do for the Lord, but when he heard of the possible hardship, when he heard he might not have a place to lay his head at night, when he heard he might have to go to prison, when he heard he might have to die, then he refused to deny himself. He refused to follow through on the job to start spreading the news. Next, we call in our second applicant found in verse 59, whose name is Another. Well, Mr. Another, I read your application and everything appears to be in standing order. There are not a lot of qualifications on your part are needed to fill this position. All I need for you to do is follow me. Follow me, Another. Did you hear me? I said, follow me. But did you notice? Watch another's response. But he said, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. Well, another, I didn't require you to have any special qualifications. I simply ask you to follow me. And you seem to have a problem with that. In fact, if you truly wanted to be my disciple, you would have known what I said in Matthew 6, verse 33, about seeking first the kingdom of God. But you seem to be more concerned about your personal situation. You see, this applicant, another, was more concerned about a funeral. A funeral which, by the way, was not about to happen, else the man would have been with the family taking care of such business. In effect, he was asking Jesus to give him some time to take care of personal business. And, and when it suited him, when it suited his schedule, he would then deny himself and take up his cross and follow Jesus. Watch Jesus' response. Jesus said to him, Leave the dead to bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Now, this may seem like a hard saying, but think about it. 
Jesus, being God, already knew that this man's father was on his deathbed. It wasn't necessarily physically, but certainly spiritually. Hence, that's perhaps the reason we have the possessive tense here. Leave the dead, the spiritually dead, to bury their possessive, their own dead. But you, you start spreading the news. In other words, yes, there are funeral arrangements that need to be made. You see, there's about to be a crucifixion. And these funeral arrangements have nothing to do with your already spiritually dead father. Now, what I need for you to do, Mr. Another, if you want a job, is to start spreading the news of the kingdom of God. Oh, you can't do that? Okay, next. Let's hear from our final applicant. Yet another said, hold on, stop the presses. Mr. Yet Another are you any a relation to that man named another in verse 59? Okay, no relation. I was about to say this was going to be a really short interview because the guy had the nerve to come up here and tell us he wanted the job. And after I hired him, told me he told that before he could start working, he needed to go and take care of some personal family business. You just can't find good help these days. Now, get this. Listen to what yet another has to say to Jesus. I will follow, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. And notice, Jesus didn't go to this particular apl applicant. The applicant came to Jesus talking about what he was going to do. In other words, this is the type of applicant that comes in off the street, takes your help wanted sign down, hands it to you and makes all kinds of bold statements like, your search is over. I am your man. Well, next, Jesus says to him, no need to complete your sentence. I've heard enough. Next, well, I'm going to stop you right here. Are you sure you aren't kin to the man named another? Because you two are starting to look a whole lot alike and sound a lot alike. Both of you come in here with a lot of excuses. You come in here and you take my help wanted sign down and you tell me you're the man but my, that my search is over and you have the audacity to say you'll do what I say but that you will obey my commands but that you will follow me but that you will start spreading the news but well my friends as you can see there's still a huge vacancy unfortunately there are as many buts. But Lord, I'll follow you. But Lord, I'm too young. But Lord, I'm too old. But Lord, I'm not a preacher. But Lord, I'm not a teacher. But Lord, outreach is not my calling. But Lord, you know my heart. But Lord, I'm not willing to work for you right now. I think I'll stop there because it doesn't really matter what follows your but. What matters is the fact that there is a but. And a but is simply your excuse or your refusal to deny yourself. You see, when it comes to working for, when it comes to doing God's will, there can be no buts. You see, but says that I want to work for you, Lord, but there are some things I need to straighten out first. But says that I want to work for you, Lord, but I'm a little tied up with school right now, maybe when I graduate. By the way, can you help me on my next exam? I don't want to work for you, but... Sure could use a blessing with an A. But, says, I want to work for you, Lord, but I'm a little burned out from all the work I've been doing around here all these years. Oh, but Jesus answers the but of our excuses in verse 60. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. In other words, Forget your excuses. You go and start spreading the news. You see, there are still vacancies even here at Trinity. 
We're looking for a few good men and women and children who aren't ashamed to hold up the blood-stained banner of Jesus Christ, to shout, extra, extra, breaking news. Read about a man named Jesus who walked these average earthly shores for 33 years. Help wanted. We're looking for people who are willing to start spreading the news about a man who dies on a hill called Calvary to save you and me. Help wanted. We're looking for people who are willing to tell, tell the story of how they stretched him wide and how he bowed his head and died, loving the whole world to himself. Help wanted. We are looking for people to tell the story wherever they go to whomever they meet about a man named Jesus who died to set them free. Not only that, help is wanted. We need people who are willing to tell the story of how Jesus was buried in Joseph's borrowed tomb for three days and nights. I know you know the story, but this is that good news I was telling you about earlier that never gets old. Help wanted. We need people willing to tell the story of how early Sunday morning he got up with all his power in his hand. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? Extra, extra, read all about it. There is a Savior, and his name is Jesus. Indeed, his name is Jesus. Lily of the valley, wonderful counselor, mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, the Alpha and Omega, the End and the Beginning, Jesus, my all and all. My dear friends, the vacancy still remains. Are you willing to accept this position and start spreading the news? For truly, the harvest allotted to Trinity is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Let us pray. Lord, you told us in your word to pray to you, the Lord of the harvest, that you would send worthy laborers into your harvest. It is my prayer, Lord, that those under the sound of my voice will answer that call of this vacancy announcement and start boldly spreading the news of your son Jesus this very day. This is my prayer. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ. Amen. Now hear God's word as he sends us out into the world and gives us his blessing. Go now and proclaim the reign of God. Do not let bodily desires enslave you, but live by the Spirit. Use your freedom to grow in love for one another. And may God reach out to you and redeem you. May Christ Jesus give you a double portion of his spirit and may the Holy Spirit bear fruit within you and guide you in all your ways. Amen. others 
take your part. Oh, singing, hallelujah. Ye who long pain and sorrow bear, praise God and on Him cast your care. Oh, praise Him, oh, praise Him. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let all things their Creator bless and worship Him in humbleness. Oh, We're so happy that you've joined us for our online worship here today. We invite you to join us here again next week online or to join us in person. We gather for Sunday School Adult Bible Class at 9 a.m. During the summer, we are intergenerational. Everybody meets together, uh, playing some games, doing some crafts and projects. Uh, please join us for that. Then our worship begins at 10.15 a.m. If you've enjoyed your time here with us, drop us a line and let us know. But even more important, drop someone else a line. Invite someone to join you and worship alongside you. If this is your first time to worship with us, uh, please like us on Facebook or subscribe to our YouTube channel if that's where you found us. Of course, if you want to find out more about the folks here at Trinity, go to our website, trinitylutheran.cc. Of course, we'd be more than happy to have you join us here in person on a Sunday morning at Trinity Lutheran Church, 1512 Louise Street at Avenue Inn in Rosenberg, Texas, where we continue to be a people praising God, maturing in Christ, and reaching others through the Holy Spirit.